Inflation is the signal. I've been thinking about this and I've been doing a lot of research. We've had the highest level of inflation in 40 years last month. Now, what does that mean? How did we get there? First of all, I know that many people are feeling real pain at the gas pump, at the grocery store. These prices are very, very real. But guess what? This level of inflation is artificially induced. This isn't a normal marketplace play. And I'm about to talk about what's going to happen in 2022 because this inflation is a signal of what's to come. Like right now, off the coast of California, off of virtually every port, there is a ton of container ships just out there waiting to come in the port to unload their goods, right? But for some reason, this supply chain uh, shortage is being induced because this is one of the factors that's causing inflation. You can't get the stuff that you need. So what's available, the price goes up. This is the artificial, let's call it the hyper segmentation of inflation. So right now, this cannot go on forever. We had inflation of almost 7% in the month of November, 7% over last year's prices. That could not continue month after month after month after month because what's gonna happen is the average person is going to be literally priced outside the market. And uh, here's some things. I was talking to a Lyft driver because I had to go get a car. And he said he used to do Instacart and he said Instacart has literally dried up. Now what is Instacart? People going out to shop for folks. So people don't have the money to do Instacart. And also, this is something that I've mentioned quite a bit. My cars be coming back empty on E, on E, on E. This is part of the inflation. Gas has become such a critical component. And this, this is something that has become very real for me because it impacts my business. Personal crisis. Do you understand that having a flat tire for the average person is a personal crisis now? A flat tire, a flat tire. This is causing a lot of pain because literally, uh, this is one of the police reports on the Range Rover and this girl, she's like, I had to pay $300 for a tire. And she kept mentioning that even with little regard that she ran over something. And th this is one of the things that is happening because I feel that 2022 is going to be bananas because of this inflation. And this inflation is not going to stop, but it cannot, you know, we cannot have almost a double digit inflation per month. If we did that over a course of a year, things would be very, very, very bad. Let me go ahead and I think this is what's going to happen. Number one, they have the forbearance thing is over. So they're foreclosing. They're literally starting to foreclose his own houses, right? Is this going to reduce housing inflation? Nope. I don't think we're going to see a reflection in the market price of housing for two to three years. If then, if then, because once again, we have a supply chain issue. One of the big things is that, you know, because if you were looking at selling your house and you like living in the house, the question is, if we sell our house, then that throws us into this crazy market where we got to buy a house. And a lot of people are just like, ah, I'll sit on the sidelines. I'm not going to participate in this. So this has created a reduced number of houses on the market. I don't think this is going to change no time soon. I think what we are seeing this year I don't think the housing prices are going to appreciate as fast in 2022 and 2023, but I don't think it's going to disappear. We're not, you know, even though the forbearance thing is over, we're not going to see that reflected in the marketplace for three, four, maybe even five years because of the supply chain issue, because all of this stuff is artificially induced because we're not operating on real marketplace forces. It is completely, this is absent because one of the things that 
push housing prices to the market to the, the levels that they are today is this forbearance thing. And I think there was like 5 million people in forbearance. And I think it's down to like 1.7. So a lot of people have gotten out of forbearance and have gone back to paying their mortgages, right? Now, here's the thing that's really interesting. We got 1.7 and they're starting to foreclose on people. But I don't believe that this is going to create an abatement in the housing prices no time soon because of that factor of, you know, we're operating on some false narratives that are starting to ring true. If you are a first time home owner or home buyer and you're trying to get your first house, you're in it for a dog fight. You can have good credit, you can have a down payment and you're still in for a dog fight. And I don't think, I think we're gonna see that in 2022. But the rate of this hyper segmented inflation is going to slow down because it has to. See, right now we're like, you know, I talked about the stimulus economy, the phantom stimulus economy, right? And we're leaving that and we're moving back to the real economy. And this is where the real pain is because what's going to happen in 2022, and this is going to kind of blow your socks off. We're going to see a reduction in inflation. However, we're going to see an uptick in layoffs and joblessness. So, you know, right now you have a job and you're paying maybe 200 bucks per month or 300 bucks per month for the same groceries that you got earlier this year. And you're paying maybe 200, $300 per month extra for gas. So that's going to be like $600 more that you have to pay for gas and food. And, Let's go ahead and say that inflation tampers down. You don't have no job. You're in the same spot. So this is what we're gonna have. Cause once again, this, 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 this hyper segment inflation cannot continue. It just cannot continue because once again, let's talk about income danger zone number one, $50,000 a year or less. And about a hundred, we have 160 million working Americans. And out of that 160 million, over 100 million are in income danger zone number one. That is a huge, huge number. So what we're going to see as we leave the phantom stimulus economy and we start to move toward the real economy, and this is something Biden is getting a lot of dings on his approval rating, because of the runaway inflation, because people are feeling this, people are seeing this. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know, it cost me 40 bucks to fill up last month. Now it cost me 60 bucks to fill up. This is something people can feel. This is something they can realize. This is something that is hitting them across the head. And once again, this hyper segment inflation cannot continue because you know, in my video where I was talking about, about, uh, let me say this carefully. If you're in the right position, if you have the right skill sets, at no point in history has it been easier to make money. If you have the right skill sets, if you have the right proximity, yeah. But, one of the things, and I was having this conversation with um, like, I, one of the big issues that I'm having is people are running over stuff and I'm having flat tires. And these people don't have the money to fix a flat tire. They, you know, when I got to the car, it was beyond a flat tire. The car, they, cause the tire was going flat. And what happens is when you drive a tire that's going flat and you keep driving it, it, the tire literally deteriorates and it comes apart. And this is what happened to this tire. And I've had numerous cases where this has happened and the person's like, I had to go get the car because they did not have the money to fix a flat tire. And here's the thing. If you catch the flat tire early and you plug it, that's like 20 bucks. But once again, these people are careless because like, you know, uh, there were people who were talking about 
uh, they were going to put the missed payments at the end of the mortgage. If that's the case, why are people getting foreclosed on? There has not been a mandatory rule or law that says, hey, we're going to put these payments toward the end of the mortgage. They're starting to foreclose on people. The foreclosure rate has jumped up 40%. So I feel the foreclosure rate is going to keep jumping. It's going to keep jumping because this, this is the thing that we're having. We've got, we're leaving the phantom stimulus economy and real marketplaces forces are starting to act and we're gonna have a lot of people continue to lose jobs. So with, as we go through this, there's gonna be a lot of pain. Like right now you may be in a house, you may have a job and your life is lovely. You're able to satisfy your bills, you're able to have put food on the table and in some cases, you're able to put some money in the bank. So today, your life is lovely. But let's go back and look at the Black Friday video. Worst Black Friday in 70 years. That was a true marketplace signal. People don't have money. Now, that's the situation with this inflation, with the departure from the phantom stimulus economy back to the real economy job loss we're going to have some nasty nasty consequences in 2022 because you know i'm seeing a lot of videos talking about inflation 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 people are working longer hours they're working overtime that is not how you're going to get ahead with an inflation essentially like for me and I don't mean to brag or boast, but inflation doesn't impact me. When I pull up at the gas pump, I fill up. I don't be like, hey, give me 10 on pump three. I actually fill up because here's the thing, and this is how you're gonna have to deal with inflation going forward. You're gonna have to create a lifestyle where you're living well within your budget. I live well within my budget. I don't, I would be, True story, if I was living at the top of my budget last year, I would have had a serious wake up call this year. But because I live so within my budget, this inflation thing, the cost of food, the, the price of this, the price of that, it doesn't impact me because I have so much surplus money. And that's how you're gonna have to deal with inflation. You've got to stop living at the top of your income. And oh, debt. In 2022, debt is going to drag a lot of people down. Like I'm seeing a bunch of videos talking about how to get credit cards, uh, the Navy Federal Credit Union hack, how to get all these high limit credit cards. At some point, that market is going to correct. At the moment, Navy Federal, Chase, um, Wells Fargo, all of these banks are still issuing credit cards like it ain't nothing. So if your FICO score is good, they will issue you a credit card. At some point, once the real, because we, we don't have a banking crisis at the moment. We really don't. Because if you will look at the number of videos talking about how to get credit cards, how to do Navy Federal, how to get Chase, um, these banks are still issuing out tons and tons of credit. Now, let's go back to the 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12 years when banks clamped down. That hasn't happened yet. Now, I feel that that will start to happen in 2022. At the moment, it is not happening. Banks are still issuing a ton of credit, credit cards, lines of credit they're still issuing them now if you are a person with a funky fico score you may realize banks will close your credit cards that's something they've been doing since the pandemic begun but if you have decent credit banks are still extending credit to you now that now that's going to be something that you want to watch because when banks start you know wells fargo actually shut down personal lines of credit. They didn't mess with the business lines of credit, but they shut down the personal lines of credit. And it was such an uproar that Wells Fargo did an about face and they went ahead and 
opened up those lines of credit again. But we will see in 2022, I feel that that's gonna become a very distinct and real possibility that banks will start to clamp down on credit. And that's another signal that, because at the moment it hasn't happened. Uh, there's a number of YouTube commercials talking about how to get 0% interest financing with business credit cards. So banks are still issuing out tons and tons of credit. But I feel that that's going to change in 2022 and 2023. So be on the lookout for that. But once again, for you to live in this inflationary economy, like once again, we're not going to continue to have this hyper segmented inflation. We can't. We cannot have 7% inflation month after month. Over a course of a year, it's gonna be like an 80% or a 90% inflation rate. That will kill so many people. And I'm talking about, like, once again, we have 160 million people in the workforce, and out of those 160 million, 100 million make less than $50,000 a year. So they're straight up in the bullseye. So one of the things that you're gonna have to do where this thing is not going to bother you is create a situation. Let's say, let's go ahead and speak on numbers. Let's say you make $80,000 a year. You make 40,000, your wife makes 40,000. So you have an $80,000 a year household income. You need to be living like you make a living. You need to be living on 40. That's going to be the thing that's going to protect you enable you to do what you need to do during this inflationary period because if you're like and i'm like i have a friend who's going through this right now and my friend because we were just talking i didn't know his personal business but he makes 100k and his wife makes 100k and they were living like they were making 300k because um when they I called him and he sounded extremely stressed. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, man, you know, um, Peg lost her job. I was like, oh man, you know, she's smart. You know, she'll get another one. He's like, yeah, she's looking. But right now it's created a little, pro little, little crisis because without her income coming in, they literally got behind in six weeks. Once her income stopped, they got behind in six weeks. They got behind on the mortgage. They got behind on the car payments. They got behind on the credit cards. They got behind on everything because they were living not at 200K, which would have been bad, but they were living at 300K. So once again, if you want to be safe during this inflationary period, and I may make a prediction, if the economy continues to melt down and deleverage, Joe Biden may be a one-term president because what I am seeing is people flip very quickly. Like we want us a Democratic president or we want a Republican president. Uh, the flip-flop, like if the economy goes the direction that I think it's gonna go, Joe Biden's gonna be a one-term president because anyone who runs against him that has a progressive agenda. Because here's the thing, we had the CARES Act, we had all these stimulus acts. We literally put $10 trillion on the balance sheet. You can't keep doing that. So we're gonna have to have some fiscal responsibility at the government level, and we're gonna have to have some fiscal responsibility at the household level, because like, one of the things I did when I started a car rental business is I did not extend myself with a lot of credit. I, I, I just felt that that was going to be bad. And at the moment, I am really glad because I don't have any bills to pay in terms of credit for the car rental business because the car rental business has slowed down. And once again, I'm getting ready to liquidate some inventory. Like next week, I got to get on the phone because here's the thing, I've had one car that was wrecked that I got fixed very quickly, and that was through shout out to USA. If you are had an accident with someone who has USA insurance, that's the best situation because they fixed the car 
and I got to talk to them and I'm going to get a loss of revenue check from them. But the car rental business has slowed down. Uber has slowed down. Lyft has slowed down. And since I did not ex go out and buy these cars on a bunch of credit, I can absorb the slowdown without freaking out because I don't have to make these car payments. So once again, when I speak to you that you need to live well within your income, like, I mean, if you make 100K, you need to live on 50K. That's what you're gonna to have to do going forward if you want to get ahead economically. No more living to, if you're making 100K and you're living at 100K or you're making 100K and you're living at 120 and you're living at 150, that's a recipe for financial disaster. That's what it's gonna be. So once again, and this is something that's gonna be funny because once again, I feel that if you are properly situated for credit banks even during the worst of the downturn people were still getting credit cards people were still getting um, lines of credit people were getting loans if you are well qualified you're still going to be able to get those that credit even I don't care how bad it gets you're still going to be able to get that credit and next year um, let me go ahead and give you some thoughts on what I plan on doing I plan on to grow my business credit and use my business credit to fund the car rental business. And I, I've got a completely different plan that I'll talk about in a separate video. But once again, like I said, the car rental business has slowed down. It has slowed down. And this is a real marketplace signal. This, this is real, this is real. Uh, Cause like I said, every time I get in the lift, I talk to the lift driver or I get into an Uber, I talk to the Uber driver, and both of them have slowed down because essentially, if we would look back, what had happened with Uber and Lyft? A lot of drivers didn't want to come back and drive. So this created an artificial shortage of drivers, which increased the pay. We're seeing this, we saw this with Uber, we saw this with DoorDash, we're seeing it on all of these segments of the market where we have these artificial hyper cycles that are not a reflection of the real economy. And as we, 2022 is gonna be a very economically painful year for a lot of people, a lot of people. So number one, let's go, let me give you the playbook. You need to be out of debt. Uh, one of my, you know, I have corporate debt, which I'm not really worried about because it's not a lot of debt in relations to the revenue. So I got a little bit of corporate debt. I'm not worried about that. In personal debt, I have one car loan, which I'm probably, I'm, I'm really thinking about what I'm gonna do with that. So from a debt situation, I don't have a lot of personal debt. Um, my debt represents maybe 1% of my financial overall status. So that's not something that's gonna drag me down or create a lot of problems for me. And one of the things that I actually <clears throat> did, I got some low limit credit cards. When I mean low limit, they're like 20, 25,000. Those are my lower limits. I actually closed some of those. Because essentially what I want my credit portfolio to be is $50,000 credit cards or more. If you ain't giving me 50,000, I don't want that credit card. So I actually closed some of my, and these were not my oldest accounts, so my, my average age isn't gonna go down, but I am getting ready to make some moves because I want to, because during these, let's call it the dark ages of 2022, because it's gonna be really, really dark for a lot of people. Um, I plan to massively grow my business credit and I'm positioning myself to grow my business credit. So one of the things that you guys have got to do is start getting out of debt. That's gonna be the noose around your neck. If you have a lot of debt, like my friend, his wife lost her job in six weeks they got behind, six weeks. And some of you, it ain't gonna even be that long because you're living too high on the hog. 
So once again, the playbook is take your income, cut it in half and live on half of your income. This is going to prevent you from suffering during these hyperinflationary times. But if you want to be someone who wants to go ahead and live at the top of your income, and then when these inflationary pressures come in, as there will, because I don't, once again, I don't think that we're going to have the hyperinflation that we had in November. I don't think that's going to continue. It may continue January, February, March, but after that, it's going to have to stop because it's going to create a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Because right now I have one, two, I've got three cars just sitting, waiting on parts because of this supply chain shortage. This morning I went to get some breakfast and I ordered an item, they didn't have it. So this supply chain situation is going to continue to get worse. Now let's go ahead and look at my situation. I've got three cars that are waiting to be repaired because they don't have the parts. Now, if you would replicate that through the whole economy, how many trucks, how many uh, assembly line uh, robot, how many things are just sitting waiting on parts? People are losing money. People are losing money because of this supply chain shortage. And so that's going to be another issue because like I said, I got three cars that if I had them, they'd be rented because uh, these were my best renters. And once again, if you just look at it and if you go ahead and observe what is going on, businesses are being impacted by the supply chain shortage and businesses are being impacted by inflation. Like, say you ran a restaurant and food prices jumped 30%. You already had thin margins to begin with. So a lot of restaurants, they're not ordering certain food items because they're too expensive. So we're going to see a lot of results and things back, back in the real economy. And I think 2020-22, the, the end of 2022, we're going to be much closer to the real economy out of this phantom stimulus economy because um, it's interesting, you know, to go out to talk to people because when the economy was in full stimulus mode, Uber drivers were making five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand a month. I talked to a Lyft driver. He started driving in September. He says his best month has been three thousand. Three thousand. So as more drivers come back and more uber drivers come back on the road their wages are going to drop like a rock and with instacart like um one of my things this is something i watch uh there's a lot of people who do doordash videos and they just film themselves doing doordash and there are some people who are really interesting personalities this is one of the reasons i watch and there's one guy, Nugs, N-U-G-G-S, Nugs. He probably makes more money from YouTube than he does door dashing. And this is another reason, which is a smart play. I think, uh, uh, really smart, because if you can monetize something that you're already doing, he's just filming out door dashing with his, he's got an interesting commentary. He's got an interesting commentary. So you're going to start to see that people are going to look for alternative forms of income and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be nuts in 2022 because if you notice, I am revamping all of the channels and um, I got some other stuff I'm getting ready to implement and deploy. So I might, I know I keep saying this, I might take two weeks off to go ahead and get all that straight. I haven't decided. Because as you notice, the content production has slowed way down because I'm, I'm, I'm being more thoughtful and contemplative for what I put up. And, you know, this channel is going to be strictly about the economy, the broader economy, because like um, we're not in a banking crisis yet, because if you were to go to YouTube and look at the number of these credit card channels, they're still issuing out credit cards like candy. And if we were in a true banking crisis, this many people, especially 
like people, like one girl, she did a Navy Federal or um, flagship rewards credit card. She got a $25,000 limit and she only makes $50,000 a year. If we were in a banking crisis, that would not be happening. <laughs> um, one guy, he did a video talking about uh, Chase Inc. He got a Chase Inc. card recently with a $36,000 limit. If we were in a banking crisis, people would not be getting these credit cards with these, these limits. It would not. So, and here's something that might sound a little strange. We may never actually have a real banking crisis because, you know, back in the day, banks would close your account if you bounce too many checks. Now they use that as a revenue stream. If you bounce a bunch of checks, the bank's never gonna close your account. They're just gonna hit you over the head, $36 or whatever it is. Cause I think, I think it's $36 for an NSF. I don't know what it is, but they're gonna just continue to hit you over the head with that. And they're gonna continue to make money from you. But once again, be on the lookout for when banks start closing branches and when banks start issuing credit. Once banks start issuing, like we're not there yet. Because like I said, if you go to YouTube, look at all the credit videos, uh, they're, they're still issuing out credit like candy. So we're not there yet. Now that's not to say that we will not get there in the future, but we're not there yet. We're not even close to that. So one of the things that you have to look at that this inflationary situation that we're in is a result of the CARES Act. I know that sounds crazy, but once again, and someone said they disagree with me if the government didn't step in, here's the thing. And if you go ahead and study Canada, Canada went through something. Now Canada's population is much smaller than ours. I think Canada has a population of 30, 40 million people. I think there are more people in California than the whole country of Canada. But Canada has some fiscal issues and they took some very hard line, drastic measures and that got them out of it. Canada's economy, you know, I need to do a little research, but last time I checked, the Canada's economy was doing much better than ours because it was operating on true marketplace forces. And right now our economy is leaving this phantom economy, the stimulus economy, which just, in my opinion, jacked up a lot of stuff. It jacked up so much stuff. So guys, once again, the key word is to live on half your income, stay out of debt, or if you're in a lot of debt, you need to be watching Dave Ramsey doing the baby steps and getting out of debt because if you're in it, like my friend, like I said, you know, his, his wife lost her job and in six weeks they got behind. That's going to be popping all across America because here's something else that you, you haven't seen. Like right now, there's a bunch of people who don't want to work, just don't want to work. And let's call it revenge of the low wage worker. They don't want to work. A uh, girl I'm dating, she runs a concrete con co uh, concrete cutting company and their, their projects have increased and they cannot find enough workers. So what this is going to do is dramatically accelerate automation. Because <clears throat> right now there are companies out there that cannot do what they need to do because they can't hire people because the people don't want to work. So what's going to happen in 2022 and 2023, a lot of these jobs that people are pretty much turning their nose up at, they're gonna wish they had gotten those jobs because they're gonna disappear. You're gonna see, like, like I said, I talked about this many months ago. Uh, last time I went to McDonald's, which was many, many months ago, I went in and there was two kiosks and you go there and you punch in what you want and there was a few people, like once they get this fine tune, you're gonna hit that kiosk and your food's gonna slide out in the tray or it's gonna slide out in the bag. And this is going to create a wave of automation and efficiency you have never seen. And these jobs, which were already gonna disappear, are gonna disappear much faster. They're gonna go bye-bye quicker. So one of the things that you have to do, and this is something 
that I'm seeing because I feel that the pandemic has made people hyper aware that they need more than one stream of income. And that's something that I've been preaching for years. I've been talking about that for years because if you just have one stream of income and something happens to that stream of income, you're literally screwed. And this is one of the situations that where if you go ahead and do what you need to do, you can position yourself and you can protect yourself from calamity by having at least two. I've talked about this and I keep talking about this. Um, I've made probably $30,000. Now, I didn't have to go out and source this stuff. I was downsizing. I was just selling things that I wasn't using. So it was a little different. But I made $30,000 in the last two months off eBay. So once again, I will say this. If you were to create an eBay business with a goal to make 300 bucks a week profit, that's something that the average person can do. But a lot of people don't want to do it because it ain't sexy or it's not TikTok or it's not social media. And a lot of people, because I'm really beginning to see that a lot of people will turn their nose up at the way to make money if the money, the way to make money isn't sexy or exciting. And I'm going to tell you, some of my richest friends have some of the most boringness businesses. The business is boring, but the money they make is exciting. I have a friend who has a car wash, a car wash does two million a year. What's exciting about washing cars? Nothing. But the payday is very exciting. So that's all I got for you guys. Like I said, I'm getting ready to do some new stuff. Uh, I need to send some emails out, let people know what's going on because uh, we will see, we will see. But yeah, man, this inflationary is, this inflation is artificially induced. This is not a real marketplace, a real marketplace dynamic. It is part of the phantom stimulus economy and it could get worse before it gets better. It could, it really could. So once again, like I said, I'm just seeing the signals. Like I said, the car rental business has slowed down. It has slowed down, I'm gonna say for me about 30%. Because right now I have cars that normally would be rented on the weekend, they're just sitting. And I expect an even greater slowdown to come because at one point I had 90% utilization. Now I'm down at about 65, 70% utilization. And another issue that I'm having is I have a bunch of late pays. I'm literally every week having to turn cars off and go get them. So like I said, we will see how that goes in um, December, but once again, and I gotta, I gotta start working on getting my dealer's license because that's something I completely forgot about. And um, yeah, we're gonna work on that because I still think there's good money to be made, but nowhere near as much money as I originally thought when I started this nowhere near as much money because one of the things that I because once again I didn't know because I wasn't in the business was the number of bogues and if you you're in a car business years ago you know what the bogue is the number of bogue renters that I get is is like it's a crap shoot because like I've started to tamp down on my uh, like the Porsche you gotta put down a deposit to get that Porsche. And since I've implemented that rule, it has not gone out because these folks do not want to put up any money because if they're put themselves in a situation where they do something stupid, they can lose their money. That's telling me a lot. So we will see what's going to go on with that Porsche. And I actually may sell it because it hasn't been messed up. And that's one of my fears because, you know, all it would take is a two day rental and someone to run into something. And, you know, Dealing with these insurance companies is a long, tedious process. I got to sit down Monday and call a bunch of people because literally I have cars sitting that were supposed to be looked at by the insurance company. They've not sent anyone out and I've sent them multiple emails. So that's a big issue. That's a really, really big issue because when you get a bold renter that will mess up your car, that car can, you, 
you could take that car as a loss because I'm looking at what I'm gonna take as a loss for my taxes and it's pretty significant. It is pretty significant, the loss that I'm gonna take this year. And if I didn't have a holding company situation, this would be kind of messed up. But because I have a holding company situation, this is actually is going to make me money. It's going to make me money. So one of the things that we need to do is we all need to be trying to make more money. You need to have more than one revenue stream. You need to live like well, well within your income. Like I know for some of you to live on 50% of your income at the moment because you've been used to living high on the hog would be really hard. But this is the thing, these are the type of tactics that are going to get you through this inflationary period that's going to get you through this where you will be fine, where you'll be eating every day, you'll be putting gas in your car every day, and you'll be paying your bills every day, and you will have a surplus. I know that's a strange, strange word to be talking about because a lot of people don't have an economic surplus. Like the people who are renting my cars are in that bottom lower economic strata and these folks don't have a surplus. Like I said, a flat tire is a crisis. A flat tire. And look, let me go ahead and give you the math because I've been through it a lot. It's, you know, the towing can be 140 to 180 depending upon what the car is and the tire can be 150 to 300 bucks, depending on what tire it is. So we're talking about a personal crisis that costs less than 500 bucks that will put these people out. This is America. This is what we're dealing with. This is what people are doing. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.